This video continues our exploration of shortest path algorithms. In the last video, we introduced the Bellman Ford algorithm. We went through all of the uh, steps in the pseudocode and uh, we kind of described how it works. I want to talk some about how in this graph we would expect it to work. Imagine that our start index is seven. So the first thing that we do here is we run through every edge kind of in order, whatever order they happen to be stored in. They're probably stored in a way such that the edges coming out of zero are first, the edges coming out of one are next, edges coming out of two, etc. So if we do that, well, it turns out that seven has two edges coming out of it. The edge to six, which has a weight of five, and the edge to eight, which has a weight of one. So we're going to call relax on both of those. And the check in relax, if we look at this again, it checks to see is the value current or is the distance currently stored in V greater than the distance to U plus the weight? Well, in this case, the distance for everything but seven is infinity. So infinity is pretty much greater than anything that we want to check against except possibly another infinity. In fact, for a lot of these, this one, when it checks this edge, it says is infinity plus three uh, or is, is the infinity at one greater than the infinity plus three? In that situation, the answer is no. Um, but in, for when we start with the seven, we get down here, the, since it's, the, it's effectively the u in that relax, then zero plus five will be less than infinity. And so this will get changed to five. It will also keep track of the fact that we got to six via seven. It will also look at this edge and will say we can now get to eight with a distance of one. Um, and it will keep track of the fact that we got to the eight that way. Then it runs back through all of the edges again and checks to see if it's found a better route. So once again, things like from zero to one, zero is infinity, one's infinity, it doesn't make any changes. But the edges coming out of things that aren't infinity could do something interesting. Coming out of the six, going to zero, we have a weight of three. And so we have the five that was stored in six plus the three, which says that we can get here in eight. Coming out of the, we've already done the things coming out of seven and they aren't going to change because seven can't go any lower than zero. Coming out of the eight, we have a three. So we have the one here plus the three gives us a four, four vertex five. Then we go through again, and coming out of the zero, we have several edges. So one is changed to the value at zero, which was eight plus three, that gives us 11. Four is the eight plus two, which is 10. 1 is the, or sorry, 3 is the 8 plus 1, which is 9. And we had not previous, oh, and then the 5, so 2 becomes 5 here because the 5 had a distance of 4, and we get the 1, and so that relaxes. At this point, everything has a value in it, but we're still going to go through more times because those might not be the optimal values. In particular, one of the things that's going to change in this next iteration through, since we got to two with a five, we're gonna discover this time that when we relax on this edge here from vertex two to vertex zero, that we can get to zero in five. And that winds up cascading through the rest of the graph and updating so that we get smaller values on all of them. To help understand this, I've also written a, an implementation of this algorithm in Scala. I took that graph that is drawn there and put it into a, um, a, an adjacency list representation. So I have this case class for an edge, which has a source, a destination, and a weight on it. I also made a case class for a vertex, where each vertex stores its index and then mutable values for the distance and the parent. Technically don't have to make this a vowel since that's the default for case classes, but 
And this, you can go through and check, this is the graph that is drawn in the drawing over here. Note that this is using an adjacency list. Because the way the Bellman Ford algorithm works, I don't need to use an adjacency matrix. I can convert this to an adjacency matrix, but all of the loops in Bellman Ford are running through all of the edges sequentially. I never have to do a random lookup of whether uh, an edge from U to V exists. I'm always iterating through them. So that makes it so that the adjacency list representation works much better and is more efficient. Okay. So I have the init function, which actually creates a vector of vertices for me. And I structured the logic a little bit differently in Scala using tabulate. I have a relax here that takes two vertices and the weight of the edge between them and does the relaxation code. And then here's Bellman Ford. And so this Bellman Ford creates the vertices with init. It flattens all the edges because I just need a single list of the edges in order for Bellman Ford to work. Uh, I don't need the, the adjacency list representation because it really doesn't, doesn't help me at all in this situation. I just flatten them out to a, a single collection. I have some prints in here so that we can kind of see how it works. And then the main loop inside of here, I go over all of the, vert where I go from one to number of vertices minus one. And each time I run through all the edges and I call relax. As you can see, it's a very simple algorithm. At the ends to do my check, I wind up using the for all to give me back a Boolean since that whole returning in the middle isn't a very functional way to do things. The for all works very nicely. And I have a call here to this function starting at seven, which was what we had traced through. And so we can run that and see that we start off with everything at infinity except for the seven, which is zero. After one step, the seven is still at zero. The, and this is the, the interesting thing about how this, this algorithm works it actually winds up making some connections a bit faster. So the six is at five and the eight is at one. Um, but after it connects to the eight, the edge outside of eight is later in the loop. So it winds up getting this connection on that first pass. So while, you know, in some ways when it makes that connection, if it happens on one pass or the other pass, it doesn't matter. The fact that we go V minus one times means that we're guaranteed to, to have it happen. Um, but it can actually happen earlier than might be obvious. After another pass, we've set the zero vertex to that eight that we found. By the next pass, it's set to five. And then by the next pass, we get our final answer. We can get to zero and five, one to eight, two and five, three and six, four and seven, five and four, six and five, seven was our start node, and eight and one. And you can go back through the graph and see that those are the shortest paths uh, for getting to things using that graph. So that's the Bellman Ford algorithm. Once again, it is order V times E, which might not be too bad for sparse graphs. It's not so happy for, for dense graphs, but it does have the advantage that it allows negative weight edges. It does not break in that situation. And this check down here will tell us if there are any negative weight cycles. And so it's, it's a very robust algorithm in that sense.